Hello, hello. Welcome to Tea with the Dread, <clears throat> number 239, uh, brought to you by the Order of Bards, Eights and Druids. This is Philip Cargon. So welcome. Do, do come into the circle. And uh, I can see already that there are quite a number of you here from Switzerland and Italy and the Netherlands and Wiltshire and St. Louis and Penzance, Northern Maine, Hesse in Germany, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, Norwich, Norfolk, Virginia, and lots of places from around the world. That's lovely to see you. Great to see you. Um, let me start with a little verse that I'll, I'll read now, and then I'll read it again in a little while. The way of love is not a subtle argument. The door there is devastation. Birds make great sky circles of their freedom. How do they learn it? They fall, and in falling they're given wings. Rumi. They fall, and in falling they are given wings. So thank you uh, all for sending in uh, suggestions for topics we could consider in Tea with the Druids. I've had some, last uh, week I suggested you might like to send in some some ideas, some topics that you'd like to explore. And I've had a bunch of really interesting emails as a result. So thank you for that. And um, everyone is just, just brilliant. And um, the first one I've had in um, asked, asked about uh, depression, feelings of hopelessness and despair, and whether we could explore that as a topic and see whether Druidry or spirituality in general had something to say or something to offer. So um, let's just begin by tuning in to, to how we're feeling. If we were boring, we'd say something like on a scale of one to 10, where one is feeling miserable and 10 is feeling fabulous, where are you? But let's not be boring. Let's 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 get a word instead. You can give a number if you like. I mean, sometimes it's helpful. I quite like those scales sometimes because almost immediately you get an intuitive sense of a number. Um, so by all means, give a number. But if you feel a word coming up, just bubbling up, that just sort of expresses that kind of essence of you in the moment, in the moment, feeling good but tired, connected, yearning, hopeful, a little lackluster. That's a wonderful phrase, isn't it? Uh, dark blue, seven. Uh, hopeful, eight out of ten. Raw, important topic. I feel myself super happy, great, anxious, contemplative, perky, tired but calm, curious, nine, uh, well-centered, anxious, getting quiet, eating chocolate. That explains a lot. Shakily confident, connected, five. Feeling hopeful because spring is near, days are getting brighter. I'm comfortable because my cat stole the best place on the couch. How infuriating. On a scale of fish speech, <laughs> fish speeches, I feel perch. Thank you, Franklin. Fair to middling. Feeling underlying nervousness, but good on the surface. So so. Confused, joyous. Hopeful, sensing change ahead. Six. Feeling wet with lots of that by lots of rain. That's this is great. Seven and rather impatient, but don't know why. Now this is interesting. Um, this combination of numbers and and words, or the possibility to use number numbers and words, because what it brings to mind for me is the contribution that a kind of behavioristic 
approach to psychology and the human self, which is where cognitive behavioral therapy comes from originally, coming out of that whole school of psychology that is often anathema to people like us who are kind of into spirituality. Anathema because it started really originated in Pavlov's work with dogs salivating response, seeing seeing the human being as an animal that wor that is um, that works through sort of stimulus and response mechanisms. Um, however, the interesting thing is it you know it does have a contribution to make. And at a, some level we do work with stimulus and response. But a spiritual approach says yes, 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 but there's more to us than just this. And a rather good example of the way that other perspective can meet the uh, reductionist behaviorist perspective is in acceptance and commitment therapy, ACT, which has this very hard nosed, if you like, approach of cognitive behavioral uh, therapy, which then meets mindfulness, the spiritually informed uh, approach of mindfulness. And the two come together, these two unlikely uh, characters meet and have a baby, and the baby is a CT, which has both. And and looking here, I see when I see uh, some of you combining a number with with a, a feeling, we're kind of getting the best of both worlds, you know, because it can be helpful to use a number. Um, so um, so <laughs> it's it's. Th 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 Jackie, the, there is a, there is a connection, but we've got to be so careful. Tea with a druid is always very deliberately short, um, and and but so worth 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 exploring that. Yes. Um, okay. So now, where are we going with this? Okay. So one of the um, qu questions that's, that a, 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 a viewer wanted to explore was the connection or the possibility that druidry uh, might have something to say to the problem of depression. And, and now the risk in short uh, broadcast is obviously simplification and uh, and uh, not doing justice to the topic. So I want to kind of frame this all with this understanding that obviously uh, for, for reasons that I've gone into before, Tea with the Druid is deliberately short. Uh, and 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 so, but I but I still think that we can. Uh, we can approach it and we can do work, do a little bit of work in visualization and meditation afterwards. So I'm just going to, I'm going to give you a couple of references uh, to, uh, if you wanted to explore this further. One is to an essay that I wrote called um, Contributions to, Towards Mental Health uh, That Druidry Can Offer. So I'll give you that link, which goes into this in, in, in more detail. And I'll also give you... Um, a link to um, what? What's the website? It's called Mind My Peelings, and the strap line of this this website is because because even bananas have peelings, and uh, so it's it's it takes uh, uh, there's a nice sort of uh, light-hearted approach to serious subjects, but dealing with mental wellness, and I think in his particular essay that I'll link to uh, the guy who writes it. Uh, expresses you know these ideas very clearly and it's about a model that's arisen out of CBT out of that approach but that I think we can really use with uh, use, use usefully here and that's this concept of the downward cycle of depression and of the way that we can enter into a spiral something happens some loss some trauma some physical some event of some kind uh, or other cause starts to lead towards stopping doing something. So say we, we, we stop going out, we stop seeing people, we stop doing the things that we like and that bring us enjoyment. And every time something like that changes, it feeds in on itself and we start going down and down and down. So we have, thoughts that have a debilitating effect on our feelings, which have a deb debilitating effect on our actions, which in turn affect our thoughts, which affect our feelings and our actions. And we go down in this downward spiral. There's an upward spiral too, if we can learn to work with the upward spiral. And in, in many ways, a spiritual teaching, I think, 
it, uh, one of its functions is to offer uh, help to get onto that upward spiral where inspiring and positive thoughts trigger positive feelings which trigger positive behavior and then that positive behavior helps us to be open to more positive thoughts more positive feelings more positive acts and we start to take an upward spiral so very easy to talk about very difficult in practice to reverse the situation when you're in a downward spiral but how can one perhaps make an attempt when you look at the value that a spiritual uh, path or spiritual teachings can offer to people one of the values is a sense of community is a sense of connection at a social level which even here i find uh, exists even with all the limitations of the internet there's a real feeling of connection i think that we can tune into and the other day my friend peter and jones who came and sat by me here and talked after we finished tea with the druid and, and i ended the broadcast he looked at me and he said do you know that was extraordinary i could feel connected to, to to everyone in the circle you know me sitting here i don't feel like i'm sitting in a room on my own in east sussex uh, i feel as if somehow in some mysterious ways we're together and that brings a sense of connection and one of the things that happens with the downward spiral is an increasing sense of disconnection feeling disconnected from other people disconnected from in the end our own feelings and our own thoughts our own sense of self but also disconnected from the world of nature and, and the life happening around us and so on so by making an attempt however small to reach out say by participating in a group like this helps to facilitate that upward spiral because we are making a connection we're reaching out going out into nature even though the downward spiral is trying to tell us that it's not even worth going out and why bother just going out and being with nature connecting with nature and if one can't go out or doesn't want to go out even connecting with nature in the imaginal world is really powerful as uh, I think a lot of us experience when we meditate uh, together and sit in, in a natural setting together in the world of the imagination, in the other world, if you like, that can have a similar effect of connecting us to nature. I can see that some very important comments are coming in, but I know if I start reading them, I'll get really distracted. So please know that I will read them, if not later on in the broadcast, then at, at the end. Um, so, so, so already the reaching out to others, feeling a sense of connection to others and feeling a sense of connection to nature are two really big steps. In addition, Druidry offers this, this festival scheme of, of working with these eight festivals about every six weeks or so that gives us something to move towards it's like now we've got how long have we got we've got two weeks in two weeks time we're moving to the festival of imog it's a time when we can pause and we can open to imog if you're a member of the order of bards and druids you know about this you get lots of material about this if you're not if you go onto the druidry.org website there are suggestions for solo ceremonies and so on that you can do but this is a ceremony where we open to the feminine, the divine feminine, and the feminine in nature, time of quiet com contemplation and of tuning in to the, the idea of motherhood, of, of, of childbirth, of the beginning of a, and the continuation of a cycle because birth is featured in Druidry at the time of the winter solstice 
when uh, the sun is reborn, the time of Imolk, February the 1st, uh, when the first flowers are starting to be born and there's just the first hints of spring. And then again at the, at the spring equinox. But so what these festivals do is they give us moments to work towards. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to think of the big picture. They give us moments to just handholds that we can hang on to as we go through life. And it inculcates or suggests to us that every aspect of nature has certain gifts for us so that we can turn to trees for example and by connecting deeply with a tree and opening ourselves to the tree not necessarily having some kind of intellectual understanding of what we're doing but on a kind of embodied and heart level just being open to the idea that this tree is a beneficent being is a benign being who simply being in their presence can heal you can be extremely powerful you know the way when somebody can hold you just hold you and that's all you need you don't need words you don't need anything more in terms of physical intimacy you don't need an explanation you just know that you can melt you can let go you can lean on you can be in the warmth and shared humanity of this hug this embrace this connection and that in itself is healing if if we can think about times like that that we've experienced or would like to experience that is what druidry is encouraging us to do in many different ways with trees with the earth with the animals with our inner guides with our friends and fellows in our community around us And even here in this unusual situation we are in this evening, 294 of us together in a circle, we can experience that sense of support and uh, sustenance. I'm going to highlight Marcheline's question do you mean going upward on this spiral taking it step by step and not immediately go to the trauma at the beginning of the downward spiral and addressing that trauma yes that's such a good point Marcheline thank you for that so there are ways of therapy where you go to the trauma and you address it and so on this this way that I'm suggesting is is another way of working where by going taking one small step, one action that will help to change the direction. That's why I read that poem at the beginning of our time together. Uh, I think that's why I read it. And um, let me, let me, let's do a meditation now. This is a perfect time to do a meditation that will demonstrate this and embody it. We don't have to think about it. We can just enter into the meditation and then afterwards, perhaps we can talk about it. So let's try this, if you will, if you wish. And if you don't want, feel like doing it right away, you can always just uh, kind of listen and then choose to do it later if you like the sound of it afterwards. So here's the invitation to either lower your gaze or to close your eyes to better concentrate on yourself. And in doing this, there's a part of you, perhaps the whole of you, that feels you can let go a little bit. Because when you close your eyes, it reduces all that mass of visual input that's coming in through your eyes. You can drop down a little into yourself, into a more peaceful state. 
and taking in a deep breath, holding for a bit at the top, and then letting out with a sigh and just letting go and letting go and letting go. Doing that one more time in your own time. And now, even as you're completely aware and fully aware of being seated in front of your screen, perhaps you can just allow your awareness of the your surroundings to fade as you become aware of being in the clearing, being in a sacred grove. You can sense the earth beneath you the trees around you and the sky above you. And you feel the stability of the earth. So every time you breathe out, you feel yourself more and more anchored and stable on the earth. Every time you breathe in, you feel the stability and healing power of the earth rising up into you. And then as you breathe in and out, you notice the perfume of the trees, the essential oils of the trees that you're breathing in. And you're aware of the presence of these trees which are anchored so deeply in the earth, yet which rise up into the air creating this sense of majesty, stability, protection and strength all around you. And you become aware of the sky above you. And you breathe in the energy of the sky. And the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And you feel drawn now to following a little path that leads out of the forest because it's those few moments before the dawn when the last of the night stars are disappearing from the sky the glow of the dawn, and you walk through the forest now, walking a little bit uphill as you go through the forest, sensing the presence of the trees and the creatures in the forest. And you come out of the tree line now and you find yourself moving towards the summit of a hill. Just as the sun begins to arrive, to rise on the horizon, you get to the summit of the hill and there's a really convenient stone, rock, just the right height for you to sit on. So you comfortably sit on the rock and gaze out across the horizon as the sun rises. And as you look out across the landscape, I'm going to read this poem again. The way of love is not a subtle argument. The door there is devastation. Birds make great sky circles of their freedom. See the birds now, circling in the sky, circling in the dawn light. Birds make great sky circles of their freedom. How do they learn it? They fall 
and in falling they're given wings. And see now one of these birds dropping down and then meeting a thermal rising up. And it just opens its wings wider and it lifts up on the thermal and starts flying up into the air. And follow it with your eyes as it goes higher and higher in the sky. And as it gets higher and higher, it becomes tinier and tinier to your vision until it's just literally a dot. And then at a moment, the dot just disappears because it's flown so high. And now it drops down again in the sky and now it's flying up on another thermal, making great sky circles in its freedom. And you might like to imagine now that you're flying, that you're picking up a thermal and just spreading out your wings and being carried by the air to make great sky circles in freedom. And you fly around the landscape and the countryside feeling the warmth of the rising sun on your wings. You make a great arc, you turn in a great arc around and you fly back to settle on the rock at the top of the hill. And then you magically transform back into being yourself, seated at the top of the hill, feeling that sense of elation, that sense of the thermal lifting you up within the center of your being, the very heart of your being. And with freedom and joy in your heart, knowing that you can return to this place at any time to fly again on these thermals, you now start to walk down the path leading towards the woodland that you see below you. And you notice how your steps are lighter, how you feel joy in your soul coming into the woodland now, sensing the woodland creatures, sensing the spirit of the forest, coming into the clearing, finding your place in the clearing, seated around the fire, and becoming aware of your friends, of your fellow travelers, seated in a circle around the fire too. And this warms your heart, just as the fire warms your body. And you stretch your hands out to either side to take the hands of the people sitting to either side of you. And you experience that warmth and connection even more strongly now. We swear by peace and love to be together hand in hand. Mark, O Spirit, and hear us now, confirming this, our sacred vow. And we feel blessed by the sense of connection and community, blessed to be together around the fire. And we gradually let go of the hands to either side of us and bring our hands to our hearts. And you might want to do this physically too. 
to feel the warmth in our hearts. May each of our lives be blessed. May the land be blessed. May all life be blessed. And coming back to a sense of yourself and to have been blessed, you gradually allow your awareness of the sacred grove to fade as you become aware of being seated in front of your computer street screen here and now, still retaining within you that sense of buoyancy, of uplift, of warmth and of connection. And when you feel ready, you open your eyes. So, Thank you for thank you for that. I'm just looking for the links that I can I can um, send you. Here we go. So I'm now going to paste in um, the link to mind my peelings. What I like about it is um, it it's well it just presents this this idea about the cycles, the downward cycle and the upward cycle, and suggestions for how you might deal with it in a very in a very direct and clear way without psychobabble um and then if you're interested in how mental uh, the mental health benefits of druidry I'll, I'll paste in here this link to to um an essay that i wrote about that so um i hope that was helpful i'm just looking at your comments here um Yes, thank you. Um, that's that's lovely to read. I am now going to make tea, and and um, come back and read your comments. Uh, many many blessings, much love, and um, I very much look forward to seeing you next week. Now next week, I think I'm going to be in Holland, actually. So it will be a yes. I it will be another presenter. I'll, uh, so, so I hope you enjoy next week and I'll see you in a fortnight. Okay. Much love and many blessings. Bye.